What's up guys and welcome back to the Drift Games YouTube channel. Hope you're having a good day because we are having a great day because we're standing somewhere very special. Now it may just look like a piece of concrete, but it's our piece of concrete. It's a Drift Games piece of concrete. This is going to be the brand new Drift Games HQ or Drift Games Garage. We've kind of been scattering cars around loads of different garages all over the country for the last couple of years probably. And finally, we're gonna have our own space. So if you can imagine and use your imagination, this is gonna be sort of an extension of the garage. We still have to level this bit out. We're hoping we can put maybe six cars parked in here. We can probably get up to nine. Our plan is to have a little editing area, have a place where we can store all our wheels and tires, and have a mezzanine where we can put some parts so we can put our you know, spare stuff from the cars. Finally, we can actually put all the stuff in one place, which means for you guys, better video content because we'll have all the cars in one place. We won't be running around the country. We can get a lot more stuff done and a lot of stuff done quickly. But this video isn't all about a piece of concrete and our new HQ. It's about one of our cars coming back. Now for the last couple of months, we've been working hard trying to get ready for a season. That didn't really happen. So from my perspective, I said, I can either put a brake on everything or I can keep trying to get the car ready. I kept trying to get the car ready. The guys in Vital Fabrication have finished it. Today it's back and here she is on, I'd say loner wheels, wheels that are not going on the car. So don't, you know, get too carried away. The body work is done, but we've a lot of work left to finish. But here's how it stands right now. Check this out. All right, so it's back. A lot of stuff's been done. It looks quite similar to how it did last year. As you guys will have checked out on a previous episode, we rewrapped it in the same livery as last year. We just changed up our, our sponsor logos. We made it look a little bit more Japanese. We've actually changed quite a bit of the body panels. So we've gone for a different style rear quarter on this, and that led us to a different style rear spoiler. The back bumper was quite high last year. We ran it mostly with no rear bumper. So we've got a BN Sports kit on it this year, a lot fatter, a lot wider, and that's gonna basically complement the new wheels that we're coming from. So these are just wheels we threw on it just to get it rolling. The new wheels will be here next week. I can't wait to show you guys. They're custom made, crazy for this car. We're gonna transform it. We obviously have lots of canards and splitters and all that stuff still to do, but in basic form, you can see how wide these fenders are. They've got the nice vent in here at the back. And also we've changed to BN Sports side skirts. We still have the Origin 75 mil front quarters on it because I think they're kind of the most aggressive. We refiberglass the, the bonnet, it was wrecked, so that's it. We now have the lights not wobbling up and down like they were last year. They're now on kind of a sleepy eye position and we've got the BN Sports front bumper. Now, this is all temporary. We're obviously gonna get the car stance right, get the wheels right, get all of that stuff done. It's gonna be basically a lot more aggressive looking than last year. I'm really looking forward to seeing how it comes out. So this is sort of like 70% done, but we said we'd show you guys anyway. So what the big changes have been on this car are actually under the surface. So we've done a, quite a bit of work on this car to make it essentially more reliable and that's kind of what this car is all about so a lot of you guys are going to wonder as we go through the car why i'm building this car but i'm going to explain as we go so in the back we've changed these bonnet did the mike did these in the past actually it's a nice job so we've got aero catches but they've been pushed back much much further so that they actually don't uh we didn't have to cut up all the, the rear spoiler on it, which was pretty neat. And a lot of the changes in the back are pretty dramatic. So as you can see, last year we had a fuel cell, same fuel cell, but it was sitting much lower and it had only a small bar protecting it. So I was always a little bit worried that even though it passed regulations, if somebody crashed into the back of me, they'd split the fuel tank. So I didn't want that to happen. So now, as you can see, we've gone for a much more sort of advanced and put a lot more thought into it this year. So what we've got here is a couple of different things. One, as you can see, Ryan and Vital Fabrication has put in these bumper bars, but they are removable. So we have spares in this. So if someone, if I hit a wall or someone hits me, I can actually pop those back out again and repair them. So all the tough stuff is in the middle to protect the fuel cell and everything on the outside. As you can see, it's all barred all the way up to here to give it strength, have strength for the, for the spoiler, all that kind of stuff as well. And you can see the firewall and all is made to fit. So that was a really big job. We've got that done now, which is awesome. And We've got the full clamshell on the back. Well, as you can see, we've cut the clamshell in half because we were a little bit worried that if we hit one side of the car, the whole back end of the car was gonna get put out of, you know, out of skew. So we cut it down the middle, so hopefully it'll sort of overlap if something happens. And now, I know this looks like I'm gonna crash the car a lot, but let's be honest, I do crash the car a lot, so it's, it's worth uh, preparing for it. The fuel cell, everything is exactly the same as it was. Overflow, everything is all to regulation. So really happy with how it came out. We've got the, the light panel on the back now with the stickers on. So, you know, nothing too dramatic. We've got a couple of finishing touches to do, but that's everything that's going on in the back. The big change, 
which is the bit that we didn't see in any of the other videos, is now the interior. So we've got new doors on the car because the fiberglass doors we had were just destroyed. So we've put steel doors, we've put them out. We have to repaint the whole interior. So that's another step we've got to do is basically paint everything. As you can see, the cage is totally scuffed up. Everything is filthy. The floor is filthy. We're going to change all that. But the one thing that is brand new in this car is right here in the middle. Samsona sequential gearbox. So that is brand spanking new and working. So it's quite an interesting setup on this car. I'm going to tell you guys why I've gone for this setup. And it's come from a lot of experience I've had watching drifting over the last couple of years that it's not always about having the most horsepower or the most grip because this car runs about 425 horsepower so it's not the most competitive car but reliability is key. Can't win a battle if you're broken down. So what we've done is probably go a different direction than a lot of other drifters. So we've gone for a Samsona sequential which means that I can't really miss shift and break a gearbox. We've already broken a gearbox in this car and putting another RB25 or 350Z box we felt like we might just keep going through gearboxes. So we've got that completely solved now with the Samsonas. We'll be doing a lot more testing on track with this in a later video, but I'm so far, obviously, just even the banging into gear is pretty awesome. But you might think it's a bit overkill for a 425 horsepower SR, but this means we shouldn't have any issues with the Samsonas at all with the power we're running. Now, here's the interesting part. On this car, we actually run a stock rear end. So that's pretty strange for a pro car right now. So we run the stock 180 rear end, with a 4-1 differential at the moment and stock everything else. So even the half shafts, everything are stock. So the problem is, is that a lot of cars you see at drift events break the shafts, break the diff, break the gearbox. So we don't have the gearbox issues to worry about anymore. But what we're doing is actually running a pretty soft clutch. And I say soft, it's an Exidy, very cheap one. And what we're trying to do is we go through a lot of clutches in this car, but the clutch actually slips before it puts too much torque or tension on everything else in the back. So we haven't had half shaft issues or diff issues simply because we're not running a clutch that's super aggressive, that's gonna break everything. My plan for this car is that I want it to be reliable. I want it to do every lap of every practice day. I want it to do every lap of an event. And I don't want it, you know, the crew under it all the time fixing things. So gearbox, solid. Rear end shouldn't be under too much pressure with 425 horsepower. And we can run a lot of grip in the car and let the clutch slip if needs be. If we need to change a clutch between events, so be it. It's not the most expensive thing. And for a lot of people out there, buying very expensive clutches, then breaking everything else on the car, and then breaking gearboxes, breaking shafts, breaking diffs, they're getting expensive. So my plan is keep it simple and just have the gearbox that it can't miss shift, have a clutch that can't put too much pressure on, and it should be reliable. So we're gonna tidy up the interior of this car, we're gonna change, it's got an S15 dashboard in there, which is pretty cool, but none of the gauges work, I don't know why. Nothing on the gauges work. We're gonna try and upgrade that to the link system. There is a link monsoon in this car. We're gonna put the digital display in there and sort of get rid of all the gauges. They're just kind of pointless and they don't work. I'm sorry to interrupt this video. I wanna give a big shout out to our partners here at Drift Games, Link ECU, who've been supporting us for many years and also supporting the best drifters and racers in the world with their amazing range of products. If you wanna find out the entire range of products they have and how they can improve the performance of your car, check out linkecu.com. Um, we're going to change up all of the kind of rough stuff in the interior to make it look really smooth, really nice. So I'm pretty happy with it. Um, we're going to keep our sparkle seats. We're going to keep everything else pretty much the same, but we just want to make it look a lot tidier. So Mike is going to be painting the inside and outside. And obviously with a new rear end, a new front end, we've got a lot of work to do. So that brings us to kind of the power plant of this car, which is not like the most dramatic thing in the world, but we're running the Garrett Turbo. We've got the Funk Motorsport uh, shield, as you can see, for heat in there. And the interesting thing about this car is a lot of people ask me why it sounds so unique. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick shot of the car and how it sounded last year. The car almost sounds a little bit like a rotary, right? Which everyone says it sounds like a rotary. And we didn't know why that was, but on closer inspection, it's actually running a DOC or a dock uh, race manifold from the States, which is something that isn't really that common in Europe, but it's a really, really good manifold. So that also gives it that kind of rasp. Um, we've got the screamer pipe obviously coming out of the bonnet, pops a lot of flames, which is pretty cool. And we've got, you know, basic stuff in there. The engine is a fully built SR20. It's not an SR2.2, it's not stroked, but it is got, you know, forged it's got the pistons it's got hks cams in there it's got all the good stuff so it bakes about 425 horsepower it's not being pushed a whole lot and we had wastegate issues last year we changed the wastegate we ran it on low boost and it actually ran really nice on low boost and it's got good power so it's laggy don't get me wrong but now that we can bring the gear ratios closer with the samsonas should get us around a lot of those problems from the rad everything else it's pretty much what you'd expect from an sr20 setup there's nothing too dramatic about it i'd like to go on and tell you how special this car is it's not that special it's got case bore coilovers in it it's got a wise fab version one 
it's a simple car and to be honest that's exactly what i want to compete in it's the most fun car i've driven it's simple it's easy it doesn't break and you can just keep thrashing on it all day so that's exactly what i wanted from this car so i'm really really pleased with how it's come together uh, wayne did a great job on building the engine it's now going what a year and a half now no issues doesn't burn oil you know we give it a good service of mobile one oil every now and again we're running the car on sunoco race fuel so we know we're getting a consistent amount of fuel all the time and it's not putting the car under pressure but a lot of the times in Ireland going between different petrol stations and even going to the UK when we compete there you get such different grades of fuel all the time that it's very hard to know how reliable that is so we just get our Sunoco race fuel our GT plus in there we know it's going to be reliable all the time uh, mobile one oil we know the engine's got good lubricant in there and all the stuff there as I said with mobile one also into the gearbox as well with the new Samsonas which we trust and all of that is pretty simple so the next plan with this car but you know what it's actually going to be the fun bit because we're going to make it look awesome so it looks okay i'm, I'm in pretty happy with how it turned out but it's probably about 70 percent so the idea is mega canards mega spit mega spitters everywhere just crazy aero everywhere we've got some really cool custom wheels coming for it as well we're going to paint the whole inside back and front so it's like gleaming white we're going to redo the dashboard because that's really grubby at the moment you guys can see it from here it's like a pretty poor carbon effect on there and it's just a bit untidy so i want to make it look a lot more professional it's kind of a shame having a samsonis gearbox in there surrounded by a lot of cheap stuff so we're going to make that look really sweet and the s15 dash does look good so i'm going to clean all that up get these doors painted look how grubby they look and um, they're just standard you know 180sx doors that we have to paint we cut everything out of them to obviously uh respect for the nascar door bars and other than that this car is pretty much good to go i mean we didn't change a whole lot of stuff differently than last year i mean from my perspective this whole car is kind of the way i want it to be we're going to make it look aggressive we're going to make it a little bit lower we're basically going to make it a fun car that every time we go to the track it just performs i don't want something complicated now the weirdest thing is we haven't aligned this car since we bought it which is what two and a half two years ago now we're not changing the alignment i just like the way it drives it could even be the wrong alignment but i just want to leave it as it is i've learned so much from driving this car i don't want to change a whole lot the only thing we're changing is the Samsonis gearbox and the way it looks and to be honest I think a lot of people especially in drifting change so much all the time in their car they constantly don't know what's changing I think I want to keep it the same as it was last year it drove perfectly I love driving it and most importantly it's so much fun to drive like a lot of cars I've driven are not as fun they're really good competition cars but they're just not good crack this one is just you can throw it around have fun with it rev the brains out keep it up in the turbo so that you don't get the lag and it's just insane so one of the other things we did with this car was well you know what's happening right around the world now drifters are under pressure for noise regulations this car was right on the borderline so we ended up doing a full new exhaust with an x in it vital fabrication it's a really cool exhaust i can't show it to you right now because we aren't on a lift but it's, we'll show it to you in another episode it's really really awesome and it's a lot quieter than it was before which is a good thing and it sounds good too i, I mean a lot of people think noise is just noise for the sake of noise but if it sounds nice and it's not too loud i think it actually looks better I'll give it a rev it's a lot quieter than before. it's a lot quieter than before so we have where's the clunk for the sequential so it's here no the clunk oh the clunk why, well, why is it clunk? It clunks when you let the clutch out, so it's going to clunk now. So I thought it clunked when you change gear. Yeah, but you have to be up the revs for that. Oh. So you have to give it some engagement. So we've taken out... I'll turn the car off so you can actually hear it. So, as you can see, the car, is, is, it's got a display here for me so I can see what gear I'm in, so we're in neutral right now. Um, some of the, these have lock-offs on them for reverse and stuff like that, but apparently it causes some issues. But also, it's also a bit of messing around and other stuff. So we simplified that quite a bit with this gearbox. So the car is in reverse now, as you can see, and then we can put it back into neutral. And then obviously, as I mean, this is the coolest part, right? If you've got a sequential gearbox, this is the cool part where you just go. Six gears. So I didn't even know you actually had six gears. Yeah, so it's gonna dramatically change so we had a five speed rb25 and this would have with a three seven diff ratio last year now we're going to a four one or a four three so we might be able to do third and fourth in this car instead of second gear we did the whole season in second gear last year so now we'll be able to just slam gears whenever we need and that's the fun part is that 
before for me, it was always a fear of changing gear because the gearboxes were so old and you didn't want to be halfway through an event, break a gear and then you're out of the event. But now with the Samsonis, we've got no issue with that. And it's been really nice and tidily put in by Ryan here in the center. Like there's no holes in the firewall or anything. It's just really, really slick. So we have our handbrake right here, our gearbox right here. It's perfect. Like, as I said, it's, it's all really accessible from the steering wheel and from my perspective, the last thing we need is that link lit digital display so we can see everything on all our information there. We know what gear we're in. We've got the steering wheel, handbrake, gearbox so close. Even if you're, you know, coming through a corner and you're in third gear, normally in, in, in a, you know, in a manual car without the, the gearbox or the Samsonis, you've got to go third over and down to second. And it's really difficult to do it. Easy to do when you're driving, but when you're sideways and in kind of in a split second, you can miss that gear or something can happen. Now all I got to do is just handbrake, smash the gear and back on the handbrake again or, or whatever. So it's so much more uh, control over what gear I'm in. Cause last year it was a pain. I was in second gear, I think the majority of the season. So now I've got this opportunity to actually give myself some revs and chase battles and stuff like that. So. It all seems good in theory, but again, we want to get back out on the track as soon as possible. The idea now is to finish the car cosmetically, fix up all this grubby stuff on the inside and outside and cover over all the new fabrication, get the wheels on, get the skirts on, get the canards on, make it look awesome, and then take it to the track and give it its first test run. So I'm looking forward to that. So if you guys like the way the car is going, like the way the project is going right now, this is a little bit of a reintroduction to this car. We said we'd get you back up to speed because it's been a bit of a gap since we've had any videos about it. So this is just to get you back up to speed from here. We're going to be pulling this thing apart and getting it absolutely perfect. So make sure you tune into those future videos. And if you guys could subscribe to the channel, it really means a lot to us because obviously you'll be notified whenever we're putting up a video and you can kind of follow along with all the projects. So we're back. We're having fun with the Drift Games vlog. We hope you've enjoyed this one. We'll see you on the next episode.